Hey guys, what's up? This is Andrew for TrendSenses.com. So I hope you guys had a good weekend. It was the Houston holidays. I personally spent this time with my family and had some very relaxing time. So today is Monday, guys, and the market is open. So I didn't have such a relaxing time today on the market. We have a pretty bad day. So let's go through everything that happened, guys. We're going to go through AMC, Jimmy Press Action. I want to show you some uh, levels on Triple Q, guys, that are very, very important and that are going to be potentially a game changer for what's going to happen this week and the coming week. I also have some good things to show you guys on the oil market and some uh, other stocks related to the oil market. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So as usual, I'm going to start with AMC. The market is not closed, guys. The market is closing in two, three hours, but I'm doing my video right now. I hope this is good for you. So uh, AMC, let's start on a daily time frame first. Bam, bam, bam. So in my last video, I was telling you guys that we have some good signs of reversal. I mean, it's not a good sign of reversal. It's some early signs of reversal because when a reversal is approaching, we often have different signs such as bullish um, divergence, such as a consolidation on low volume, such as some short term breakout, upside breakout. So here uh, I showed you guys on the, on the hourly time frame. So let me show you quickly again. We were having a bullish divergence. Uh, bam, bam, bam. It was here, guys. It's still here, by the way. So this bullish divergence is still uh, impacting the price action. And it's just so very quickly. A bullish divergence is whenever you have the uh, price action making new lows with the momentum going higher. All right. Just like here, the momentum is going higher. The price action is going lower. So this is showing you that uh, bears are not able to uh, take ground even on, um, no, sorry, it's showing you, this divergence is showing you that uh, the momentum is, is is slowly starting to come back uh, even when the price action is making new lows. So we are in a bearish move because we go lower, but the momentum is coming back. So this is uh, an, a very early bullish sign. Uh, to, to really have a bullish signal, uh, we need to have this uh, bullish divergence that is combined with another signal related to the price action, such as a breakout. So this is what we were looking for, guys. Uh, and here on the hourly time frame, I don't know if you see well, I hope you do. Um, you can, whenever you see a bullish divergence, you need to find a trend line, all right? Your trend line to, um, to place it properly, you need to have a lot of reactions in the very recent past. So here, as you can see, guys, we're having a very nice consolidation. All right. So this is showing me that this trend line is active and that a lot of bears are defending it. So this trend line was very good uh, to have our bullish signal. And this morning at the open, I was looking at the market and I saw that we arrived just on this trend line. And what happened here, guys, as you can see, we got brutally rejected. So indeed, bears were here and they just rejected the price action on uh, low volume, I would say. So um, so what to conclude from that, we can just conclude that we tried, we didn't make it. Uh, does it mean that bears are back in control? Not really, not really. We still have the momentum. So bam, it's not nice. We have here a breakout of momentum. You can see the MACD is still clearly going higher, but the RSI is making you low. So we have kind of, kind of in a mixed, um, we have mixed signals on the short term on AMC. Um, to me, we are still in this consolidation. All right, as you can see here, if if I check on the daily time frame, it's maybe a little bit more visible. Just a bam, bam, bam. Sorry, here. Okay, you can see it's been like one, two, three, four. It's the fifth day. We are not really uh, going lower, not going uh, higher uh, either. We are slowly uh, a little bit grinding lower so bears are a little bit in control still uh, but bulls are definitely trying something but for now they are not strong enough uh, the reason being uh, that the rest of the market is tanking guys all right so uh, this is the reason why bulls have uh, some troubles here to take back control so what can we expect here to be honest um, it's hard to say probably a little bit more consolidation uh, the worst case scenario I see right now is to go to the 16 level, then rebound. Once again, the first time it's almost always, uh, it, it, it's, it's something that always, almost, uh, almost always happens, sorry. Uh, whenever a support has not been touched for quite some time, if it's, if it's touched 
uh, for the first time in a while, then usually we have a bullish reaction. Then what's going to happen? I don't know. But if we go there, we're going to have this bullish reaction. The best thing, uh, to be honest, is to consolidate as close as possible to this trend line. So right now, AMC is trying to fight back. We are down 4%. So it's not that bad. Uh, the rest of the market is is starting to be positive. I'm going to analyze that as well. So here, what are we looking for? Either we go to 16, I'm going to be a buyer here at 16. It's fine. My position starts to be big, but I can still increase it. Um, I'm not 100% yet. I'm going to buy lower or I'm going to buy higher whenever I have some bullish signals. Here, the bullish signal I'm looking for is once again, once again a breakout above this trend line. Uh, now, it's not going to be as good as if it, if it has happened today because today we were looking perfectly nice, guys. We were having this consolidation and the breakout is very reliable whenever it happens just after a consolidation on low volume, very close to the resistance area. So this was a perfect situation. We just didn't have the breakout. So let's see. The perfect thing would be to do that again, consolidate again here, and then bam, have a breakout with volume increase. All right, guys, this is what we're looking for. If I see that, I'm going to be a buyer. Um, oh, right. And guys, you know my um, longer term analysis. I can do it quickly again, guys. Uh, I was expecting a third wave to, uh, to happen here. Uh, it's still possible, but once again, the probability of this massive third wave to the 70 area, even slightly above, has reduced a lot uh, after we broke out below 21, all right, which was the 61.8 uh, fib ratio, which is a level below which we usually don't go in second wave. So whenever the price action is going below that level, it can still bounce, of course. And I think that we're going to have a technical bounce coming uh, sooner or later. But right now, this third wave scenario, I, I still keep it here, yes, because it can still happen, but just the probability is lower. So we're going to need to see what happens once we come back to this area. So this is what uh, I am playing right now. This is what I'm targeting. Um, and let's see what what's going to happen whenever we arrive there. If we arrive with uh, increasing volume, just like we did here, it's going to be looking very good. If we arrive in this area on low volume, guys, <laughs> that won't be looking good. But for now, we are not there yet. Bears are still in control. We are trying to take back control, uh, but we need this breakout above the 18 level, is it? Let me show you guys that again. Bam, bam, bam. Right now it's around 18. Okay, let's say tomorrow. Okay, around 18, guys. If tomorrow we close above 18 on the hourly time frame, I mean, on the hourly time frame is not good enough. We need at least four hours, all right? At least um, four hourly candles or one four hour candle to be uh, closing above that 18 level. So let's find out, guys. Let's see what's going to happen here. GME, GME, guys, uh, was strong. So let me show you what I was um, talking about in my last video. Uh, so very quickly, daily time frame. Uh, here the situation is that uh, we are looking much better than AMC because we are much higher in terms of retracement of the second wave, as you guys can see. Even if today we are coming to the 50% um, level where that has been touched, by the way, and we had here a bullish reaction. Um, I mean, the RSI is still above 50, 50.5, so not that uh, far above. The MACD has turned negative already last week. So we have mixed signals coming from the momentum, but uh, FIBs are giving us quite good information because we are still above this 50% uh, FIB ratio, which is the neutral area, I would say. Uh, we can go lower, we can go to 120. We, we would still be bullish on the long term here. Um, so now on the hourly time frame, guys, I was showing you in my last video, uh, I lost a little bit of money here, by the way. Um, I was showing you guys that this 152.3 level was very important. We had here, uh, because it has been a level that has been touched many times in the past uh, week here, as you can see, let me get rid of the film so you see better, bam, 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 okay. Uh, so here, as you can see, we had this consolidation. Let me do that again. All right, just here and uh, whenever we have a consolidation, this is a good environment for breakout. So then we need to find a good resistance and we need to find a breakout with increase in volume. Here, as you can see, we had this breakout. Uh, I'm not sure uh, when I did the video if this candle was finished or not, but here clearly we can see that the volume was not here. I personally still jumped uh, in the trade here because I don't want to miss it. And I FOMO'd a little bit. Uh, I lost money, but it's a call option. So it, it's totally fun. Um, I, I mean, I'm not scared for strong moves down because anyway, my call will expire worse less. So this is the good thing about call options um, is that at least, you know, the maximum loss you can make. So this is the reason why I personally prefer to go to options uh, for now. I also have shares, of course. 
Uh, but here I, I did this try, it didn't work. So what happened here? You can see we had this breakout. So this hourly candle is closing above the 152.3 level, but the volume increase was not here. Then we had like one, two, two candle above, then below, then above. And we, we played around this level, but we didn't manage to uh, take back control here. And this is the reason why I told you guys better to go on the four hour time frame because on the four hour time frame we have one close above but the next one is below. So once again, depending on how reactive you want to be, uh, you're going to sometimes use the hourly, sometimes the four hours time frame. You're going to sometimes wait for a second candle, sometimes not. So there is no magic formula. It's about uh, as well the other signals. In this case, I personally wanted to be reactive and I went in too early. Uh, then we got here, as you can see, brutally rejected, and this is often what happens. And once again, I'm explaining that very well, guys, in the uh, in my course. You can find it by clicking on the, in the link on the description of, of this video. And I, I'm explaining everything, guys, that I'm showing you here. And here, for example, uh, this is what we call a stop hunt. So this is a good example. So whenever you have a breakout on low volume uh, that is not working, then usually you have a, uh, I mean a fake out, then then usually you have a breakout, which is a real breakout in the opposite direction. So here it's a little bit what we had. Here we didn't manage to um, to close and stay above this 152 level. And then here we have this breakout. That is not looking good. Um, right now, clearly on the short term, bears and control. Um, I'm checking the momentum. The momentum is flattish, so no big information. Um, it's hard to say what's going to happen here. We have a little bit the same phenomenon that is happening now around the 142 level. As you guys can see, this level has been uh, acting has been acting as support very well. One, two, three, four, five, five reactions, and here it has been broken. And now we are we are somehow coming back to test it. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know, it has not been respected here, so maybe it's not going to be respected here. Uh, we have a lot of noise. The signals are not very good quality because there is no volume. As you can see, we have here a brutal move down on very low volume. So whenever you have low volume, does it mean that the signal will not work? No, it just means that uh, it's less reliable. So we had here a fake out on the upside. Uh, maybe it's a fake out on the downside. I don't know. Um, but... To me, we're still in this consolidation that is still, you know, taking place a little bit like on AMC. As long as we don't have a second candle below this 142 level, uh, to me, we are still, you know, in this range between 142 and 152, like we have been for the past week. If 142 breaks on the daily time frame, so if we get a close today below this level, um, this will go together with the rest of the market, but we we are likely to go test the next support, which is 130. So the 130 of GME will probably go together with the 16 of AMC. So hopefully we won't need to go there to find more liquidity, more buyers waiting there. Because once again, the uh, only good thing about going lower is that uh, we get new buyers in the move, which is of course good. The more buyers, uh, the more money, the better it is to, um, to make strong moves up. So sometimes pulling back is a good thing. Um, so let me conclude here. I mean, we have a lot of noise. Whenever you have noise, you know it's, it is a corrective move. So here the good thing I have is that I have a noisy move down. So bears are not organized. The move up, was it noisy, guys? Was it? <laughs> I mean, do you think this move up was a clean move up that is respecting all the usual rules? And I can tell you it is, guys. It is. We had the one, two, three, four, five with a massive volume inside the third wave. Fib ratios were respected. I mean, this was a very, very clean move up with a one-to-one -one relation uh, that happened here. So then this move down is corrective. So can it go lower? Yes, it can. But it's just showing us that whenever we go up, we are organized. Whenever we move down, it's not organized. It's noisy. You know, you have a lot of fake outs. So this is rather confirming to me that bulls in control on the long term. So I like to see bears dis disorganized on the downside. Uh, now, something else I wanted to show you guys, triple Q, because once again, this is all related. I told you guys many times, we often have the negative beta taking place before strong moves up on AMC or GME. Negative beta means negative correlation, means the global market is tanking when the uh, meme stock AMC, GME are uh, mooning. And I'm, I'm, I like to see this negative beta at play. 
Um, so today we have it right now, but I prefer to see it in, uh, in the other direction. Of course, the global market is slightly positive right now. GME and AMC are uh, going lower. But what is important in, the, in this uh, analysis is that you don't want to have a global market that is tanking if you want meme stocks to squeeze. Uh, for proper squeeze to happen, it's going to take a few weeks. We need to have a bull market. So here, um, I'm following this trade for quite some time. Um, I will not explain again everything that I'm doing here, guys. But basically, I took a bearish position here at 370. Yes, close to the highs, guys. It's much easier to do technical analysis on Triple Q. And this is where I personally make my money uh, when I made most of my money the past two, three months. Um, so I'm going to keep trade, of course, this uh, ETF, which is the NASDAQ 100 ETF. Uh, here I took profit uh, at 350 and then I took a long position at 338. So I'm planning, I'm playing this third wave here that could happen and go to uh, this area. It's not my preferred scenario. My preferred scenario is some sideways movement and then a direction that will be taken, maybe on the upside, maybe, maybe on the downside. I'm not so bullish, guys, on the global market. Uh, we are still in a complicated situation with the inflation, uh, with the war, with the growth that is impacted, with the COVID. I mean, um, we have Powell that is going to talk, I think, uh, on Wednesday or Thursday this week. So let's see what he says. But uh, we are not in a nice situation, so I personally don't know where the market will go. I'm rather neutral at these levels um, and I'm playing, you know, supports and resistances. I'm buying low and selling high. Uh, whenever the market is bullish, I buy high and sell higher. I'm buying breakouts on the upside. Whenever the market is uh, moving sideways like that, I just buy the dip and sell the rip. So this is what I'm going to try to do here again. Uh, so today, as you can see, guys, in my Discord, by the way, feel free to join. And you have a uh, six months membership, platinum membership that is offered guys in the course as well. So if you're really interested to learn how to trade, join the Discord, join the course. I mean, just take the course, come to uh, chat with me on Discord. I will upgrade you to platinum and you can have a six month free membership uh, on Discord. If you don't want to have the course because you think that you are good enough, which is totally fine, uh, you can still ask your questions to me in Discord every day. I will share my trades with you. Uh, and maybe one day you will take the course if you need you can have a discount once you're platinum you can have a discount as well so there are many ways to have the course at a good price and the membership at a good price as well so today my trades were uh, quite simple so yeah I'm going to show you U USO as well we're making some good money here uh, but triple Q first uh, just the usual one I buy 338 and I stop loss 335 so this is what I did today so I'm making some money here um, I bought at 338 and you can see we had some sort of a fake out as well here on the downside but it's not a fake out as long as you don't have a close below 338. So this is what I was saying today in my discord. I was telling you guys that we're going to open lower. You can see guys this is what I said. We are about to open lower. So I said that this morning uh, before market open we are about to open below 338 which is not great but totally fine as long as we do not close below that level today. All right. So this, is, this is what I said this morning and I said if we do 338 will be resistance blah blah blah. For now we keep our Thursday order. We buy 338, we stop loss uh, 335. So today the market went to 335.8. I have not been stopped and I'm happy to be in this position. I'm now having a long position uh, on triple Q. I'm going to try to take profit around 350. The interesting thing of the day, guys, is the rally that we're having that is confirming uh, that is I mean, confirmed, not confirmed yet, but it's, that is looking much uh, better than uh, yesterday and the day before uh, on the oil market, guys. Why? Because um, we have French presidential election coming in four days, guys, or six days, sorry. And, um, and there is a, a ban of the oil, of the Russian oil that is going to take place, I think. Uh, an embargo uh, on um, that is coordinated by the US, by Europe that are waiting for the French presidential election to pass. So next week and then they're, they're going to probably pass that depending who is elected, Macron or uh, Marine Le Pen, who is a little bit close to Russia. Not really close, but, you know, they will for sure uh, not vote for this um, ban of Russia oil. So my take is that Macron is going to pass because this is France, guys, and we're not going to have, uh, you know, um, this kind of president. I mean, Marine Le Pen, who is a bit, uh, I would say, not very pro-Europe, not very pro um, 
economy, but whatever. So I think that Macron is going to pass and I think that then they're going to pass this law. So this law should happen maybe during the weekend or just after, I'm not sure. And this law is going to be, uh, I think, a strong market mover on oil. So I think that this is what's going to happen. So here, uh, I want to buy more. I'm having already a very nice position here. I'm making some good money here on this trade today. This trade that I gave you guys once again in my Discord. I'm not going to show you again, but I gave you this trade. And right now we're starting to take profit. So this morning we took uh, 50% of the profit at 80.5. Uh, we entered here, guys, at the low. Yes. And um, and I think that we're going to go to 105 on USO, which is equivalent on oil around 140. All right. So I'm predicting here a massive move up on the oil market. Uh, and I'm going to show you something very cool, guys, in uh, in uh, in two minutes. I'm just concluding here. Uh, right now, I'm going to try to use FIBS to buy more. So whenever you use FIBS, you just measure the move and you use FIBS to enter. If you don't know what ratio you should use, then take my course because I'm explaining all of that. But I can give you some hint. You need to combine that with the other support levels. All right. So here uh, I placed a uh, buying order. Uh, around 100. Uh, if you want to know more, once again, join the Discord, guys. I'm not sure we're going to see it again, but if we do, this would be a typical uh, second wave pullback, and then we'll probably move higher, developing in five waves, as we usually do. Only on AMC and GME, things do not happen as usual, but fair enough, right? It's it's a different market with different players. There is manipulation. We know that. So, I mean, we need to adapt, uh, but... To me, the best way to adapt is not to change anything. And each time I'm going to see a bullish sign uh, and a bullish situation for a squeeze to happen, I will be a, a buyer and I will uh, post videos very bullish about AMC and GME. Um, because even if there is manipulation, at some point, guys, they can't manipulate the market forever. So let's see what's going to happen to come back on the old market, guys. This market is very strong here. Actually, look, the volume are not that big. So this is, to me, a little thing that is, I mean, not perfect. Everything here looks perfect. Look, guys, it's... it's um, it's a long-term view I'm having. I'm sharing this analysis for the past two, three months, guys. I've been very accurate here because once again, it's like a civilized market. You know, things are more predictable, I would say, than on some other markets. Uh, and here we had a long-term breakout above the blue trend line that was here. And after this kind of breakout, let me get rid of that. Uh, we often have a pullback as we did. Let's check quickly to which fib ratio around the 50% classic pullback. Uh, and then we had a triangle forming and now we have a breakout above this triangle up a bend. The only thing is that here, as you can see during this breakout, we had the volume. Uh, during this breakout, we we have a lower volume. So that's not good, guys. That's not good, but my longer term analysis is uh, solid enough for me to uh, enter this kind of breakout. Once again, you will never have a perfect uh, sign signal in. I mean, sometimes it happens. You have some uh, signals that are almost perfect, but most of them, they're not perfect. You need to choose which one you're going to enter, um, even if it's not perfect. And this one I decided to enter because I have some longer term uh, signals that are very good and that it makes total sense when I look at the fundamentals, at, the re at what is happening in the world, the war, my take on the war. Of course, I have no clue what's going to happen. I'm not an expert of war, but um, my take is that it's going to last because, I mean, this is what most experts are saying and I think it makes sense. I think that Putin will not let it go without having some serious uh, compens compensations. And I think that um, Zelensky will not uh, give those compensations so easily. So it will take time. And if it takes time, of course, it is bullish for the for the oil market, which is, of course, very sad. Uh, I don't wish it take time, but it's just the analysis I'm making. Uh, all right. So uh, the the play I want to share with you guys, I didn't post an alert in my Discord with that. This was given to me by a member, Scott. Uh, if you watch this video, thank you, brother. Um, because I think it's interesting and I want to share it with you guys here on YouTube. Once again, I didn't share it in Discord because this play is not perfect. But as you guys can see, this is CEI, Camber Energy. It's um, oil related company. And um, they are ranging between one and four for the past one or two years. All right, two years. Um, and right now, as you can see, you know, we can make some tier, but basically things often happen the same way. All right, you have some kind of trend line, then a breakout, then we, we go to four, then we move lower, then, you know, again, and this pa pa pa. So right now it looks like 
uh, we are in uh, a move up that started here, as you can see, breakout with increase in volume, clearly here, here increase in volume as well. A bit noisy though, but it's still a breakout with increase in volume after a nice consolidation. Um, and I think that this is just a longer move. So it looks like we're going to four, but I mean, we don't have any clear signals on the short term. The only thing that is good here is the signals I'm having on the oil market because this is an oil related stock and the Reddit crowd is uh, going at it uh, probably because it's related to what is happening on the oil market uh, with the oil market. So I think that uh, the oil is going to keep going higher. So we have here, uh, I mean, high probability that this move continues higher. Uh, and in terms of risk reward, I mean, this is kind of capped. Sorry, I said one, it's 0 0.5. I mean, this cannot go below zero, right? So the worst case scenario is that you lose one and the best case scenario, you make three. So it's a three to one risk reward trade. So I think that it's a nice trade to make. Uh, but once again, I don't share it on my Discord because I don't have a nice consolidation that happened before this breakout. I'm monitoring this breakout. We have here clearly a resistance at 1.04, uh, but we are testing it uh, on with some volume increase. So this is a nice situation. I could actually post it. I don't post it because I'm missing here some kind of consolidation, all right? And whenever you have some consolidation just below the resistance, it makes your signal more reliable. And I'm trying to share those signals with uh, my community. So uh, bam, 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 or I'm going to share some buy the dip, sell the rip trades that are easier to make once again when you are in a sideways market. So pam, 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 last but not least, guys, silver also going well. Uh, this is a trade I did with you guys when I was live. This is a trade I shared with my Discord as well. Uh, I think we started the fifth wave. I think we're just going to go to 26 in a matter of a few weeks. Uh, so I'm personally positioned to make money if this scenario happens. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to click on the sub, like and bell button. So you're going to be the first to know when I upload anything new. And stay close to shore. I'll see you guys.